Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn. In today's episode, we're talking about the Green Bay Packers 2024 wide receiver group. Uh, and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the production, athleticism, and other statistical factors that determine who you should invest in long term in the Packers backfield and who you should invest in this year in terms of fantasy purposes. So stay tuned until the end of the video where we reveal who that prospect is. But if you're new to the channel, new to the stuff that I do, you can check out uh, a couple videos in the description. One of them is my top 50 prospects video, which goes over a lot of the data work that I do, kind of detailing the correlations and that kind of stuff. Uh, but with that, let's get to the list. So the setup is simply this. Um, the Packers have the fifth best wide receiver depth in the NFL based on cumulative approximate value, age, and pre-draft database grades. So they have a lot of talent in their wide receiver core. Uh, the Packers will also face uh, only four teams in 2024 where they have a substantial offensive advantage. So what does that mean? Well, it means that based on the data work that I do, uh, they have double-digit defenses in terms of in the positive so based on how good their offense is versus the defense that they're going to face they're only going to face four teams where they have a, a supreme advantage against them from an offensive and defensive data perspective so it's not going to be the easiest schedule ever when you look at it uh, when you look at the overall division and everything else like that uh, 2024 will be the ultimate test for who gets the who gets open the most for this team and I think when you talk about investing in a prospect long term, there's a lot of different things you have to consider, which is what this whole video is going to be about. So let's take a look at the pre-draft and post-draft profiles of this talented wide receiver group. Uh, we're mainly going to look at Romeo Dobbs. We're going to look at Justin, uh, Christian Watson. Uh, and we are also going to take a look at Jaden Reed. So we're going to take a look at all those prospects. And then we're ultimately going to decide on who you should invest in long term. Um, where their ranks kind of going and what the potential is uh, long term as well. So starting with the first part of this, which is the pre-draft profiles of these prospects, one of the first areas you have to start with is offensive market share data. So you can pause the video to kind of learn more about the process with that right here. But based on that data, taking a look at Romeo Dobbs, he was probably the best out of this group in terms of this data profile. So he had a strong 83 percentile receiving market share score. 93 percentile in terms of his total offensive market share and his touchdown market share was 90.41 out of 100. Uh, when you look at his efficiency scores you can learn more about that on this page right here uh, efficiency wise was also fantastic uh, 70 percentile in terms of his td percentage and then close to the 80 percentile in terms of his yards per reception so his market share data was phenomenal his yards per reception was phenomenal it's not surprising that he's been one of the best wide receivers for the packers over the last two seasons. Uh, and then when you get to the wide receiver athleticism data, taking a look at him, didn't have a lot of data. He was kind of injured during the pre-draft process when he came out. But uh, overall estimated speed score would be 45 percentile. Again, that might be better, give or take, uh, if he actually was healthy during the process. But that's the way his data kind of shakes at the wide receiver position athleticism-wise. And then when you get to adjusted production traits, so adjusted production takes a look at their production for their level of competition, for their age, and their strength of schedule. This is also another area where Dobbs did phenomenally well. His age score was in the 80 percentile, his MSA rating was in the 87 percentile, and he was in the 90 percentile in terms of his pass rating. So these are all strong marks for him overall as a prospect. Now, when you get to the other wide receivers on the, pro on the team, in terms of Christian Watson, uh, Watson had an 81 percentile receiving market share score at North Dakota State. He had a 55 percentile total offensive market share score and a 47.80 uh, touchdown market share production score. So his overall data was not the best at a smaller level program. So, again, this is some question marks here. Now, when you get to his efficiency scores, he did have good efficiency. So his uh, touchdowns per touch, yards per reception were all decent. So it kind of makes you wonder, OK, maybe if he had more opportunities and was given the ball more, you know, North Dakota State is more of a running football team. They're not really a pass-heavy team. So there is a – maybe he would have done better if he was in a offense that, you know, threw the football more, essentially. Now, when you get to athleticism scores, uh, Watson is definitely the most athletic wide receiver in this particular group. 
Um, he had 91 percentile in terms of explosiveness, 92 percentile in terms of speed, and then 80.23 percentile in terms of flexibility for his size. All these marks are pretty fantastic numbers for him to hit based on his data there. Uh, when you get to adjusted production for him, this is where he kind of fell off a little bit. So one, he's a little bit older, so he had a 54 percentile age score. His MSA rating was 31, and that's because he didn't really play tough competition at North Dakota State compared to like the FBS or Alabama or LSU, those types of programs. And then he had a 47 percentile um, pass score. Again, a lot of that is because of level of competition. Again, so he also had some concerns in terms of his overall market share production. So he wasn't the most productive wide receiver at a program that is lower level division. So there were a lot of question marks about him based on his overall pre-draft profile. And it's not surprising that Romeo Dobbs has kind of become the top wide receiver on the Packers out of that draft class because he just had a better production profile and overall age profile as well. Uh, but we still have some time to kind of see what happens with Christian Watson. And then the last wide receiver to talk about is Jaden Reed. Based on his data, he had strong marks in terms of his receiving market share, total offensive market share, and touchdown market share, all within the starter averages or near them. Uh, when you take a look at efficiency, he was also a very efficient wide receiver at the college level. And then when you look at athleticism traits, he had above average speed with some, you know, issued average flexibility. He's not the most athletic player ever, but he does have at least one athletic trait and speed that could help him overall long term. Uh, when you get to his adjusted production scores, his age was the only question mark there, 38 percentile in terms of his age. But his production did help him a lot in terms of his MSA rating and his pass rating as a prospect and put him within range of being a starter <clears throat> to Pro Bowl player. Now, in terms of NFL data, so now we're going to look at the NFL comparison. So we just left the college football data, and now we're going to get to the NFL data. How did these players actually play in the NFL? Because I know that's what a lot of you guys are thinking. I don't care what he did at Nevada. What did he do on the Packers? And this is what we're looking at right here. Uh, looking at targets, so the, the player that has been the best consistently in terms of getting targets uh, has been Romeo Dobbs. Even with the inclusion of Jaden Reed, he still is leading the Packers in, in a certain extent in terms of his targets. Uh, receptions, of course, would be more so with Jaden Reed. Um, yards also would be more with Jaden Reed. We're going to get more into that in terms of uh, uh, other data here. Uh, Touchdown-wise would be more so with uh, Dobbs. Uh, in Reed as well, with Christian Watson having one really good season in terms of 2022. And in terms of first downs, uh, Dobbs also kind of leads the group in that aspect, with Jaden Reed followed closely from there. So the top two wide receivers right now for the Packers, from a production standpoint, just looking at it in terms of raw data. So again, this is the percentile ranks of them um, in terms of targets, receptions, yards, touchdowns, and first downs. Jaden Reed and Dobbs would be the top guys. But when you look at their efficiency scores, so efficiency deals with yards before contact or yards, uh, let's say yards before contact per reception, um, yards after contact per reception, A dot, which is average depth of target, which you know depends if they're a deep threat or not, and then how often they break tackles when they catch a football. When you take a look at this data, again, this data is looking at their efficiency as a wide receiver. Watson has been the more interesting prospect, if you will. And, and it's not surprising because he's the most athletic, but he's been much better in terms of, you know, breaking tackles after contact. He's been much better in terms of yak in his overall career. Uh, and uh, Jaden Reed has also been pretty decent in that respect, whereas Dobbs has not really been the most efficient wide receiver in that respect. Uh, you know, last year, Dobbs, um, had a 20.07 out of 100 yak score. So he was not really getting that much yards after contact but compared to other prospects. He's commanded a lot of targets, but he hasn't been getting a lot of yards after contact. And again, it all comes down to kind of what you value uh, in terms of your prospects. But uh, overall, when you look at the data here, it does favor Watson and Reed compared to Dobbs when you look at all of this information in terms of efficiency, in terms of how they did on a per-play basis, in terms of how many yards they got before contact, how many yards they got after contact, and, of course, ADOT, 
and how many uh, receptions, uh, how many uh, broken tackles that they have per reception. All these areas have kind of favored them in that respect. Uh, now, when you get to some other data here, uh, drop percentage wise, uh, Reed has been the best out of the group in terms of the least amount of drops out of this group. And again, I know a lot of people have, they kind of hate drop percentages, you know, hey, it's part of the game, you're going to drop the football. But it is interesting, again, that Reed does have that really high or at least better drop percentage compared to the rest of the wide receivers here. Uh, in terms of quarterback rating, uh, Dobbs has kind of led the group. So when you target Dobbs in terms of 2022, you typically had a 62 percentile uh, quarterback rating compared to the rest of the NFL. So that's a pretty good mark there. Um, based on TD percentage, so TD percentage is how often when they got the football, it led to a touchdown. Uh, Watson was much better in that respect. So again, as I stated before, Watson has always been the more intriguing prospect based on the 22, 2022 data because he, he is the more athletic player. He does have the more upside to really put a lot of things together and become special. Uh, but again, he hasn't really been getting the targets like you would want him to get. Uh, and then, of course, in first down percentage, which is how often you got a first down per catch, that more so would be with Watson and Reed compared to Dobbs as well. Uh, and then when we get to the next part of this, which is uh, just a general, so we so we took, we took looked at all that data. So we looked at the macro production, which is the, uh, you know, yards, touchdowns, et cetera. Uh, we looked at the efficiency scores, and then we get a rec star score, which the rec star score takes the macro production plus the efficiency scores to give you an overall receiver rating. And based on all that data combined, uh, macro production-wise, Jaden Reed has been the better overall wide receiver compared to all these other wide receivers in terms of overall production. Um, in terms of efficiency, Watson's 2022 season has been really impressive from that respect, and Reed has also had a very impressive 2023. And then the best Rex star scores have been between Watson and Reed. Reed has a 92 percentile overall reception score, and Watson has a 93 percentile overall reception score. So all these numbers are pretty decent uh, for both of these wide receivers, but again, Watson has had some injuries. Watson hasn't exactly been the most consistent. Dobbs, despite being not that efficient of a wide receiver, has consistently got more targets. Uh, and maybe that needs to change. I mean, we'll see. But that definitely is something that is interesting, uh, nevertheless, in this particular situation. Overall outlook, I would say, for the Green Bay Packers. So we looked at all that information, and it was a lot of data uh, in terms of that. But... Uh, I would say who sh you should invest in long term would probably be Jaden Reed long term. Um, I, you know, Romeo Dobbs absolutely should be valued over Christian Watson uh, because Dobbs has commanded more targets, even when being inefficient. So I know there's a lot of people out there that again they they shun inefficient wide receivers. Like why are you giving the ball to this guy that isn't as efficient as this other player? Uh, and again, there's there's it's right there, but. Dobbs has continually been the more consistent threat here. So even though, again, I would say you should go with Jaden Reed because Jaden Reed does have, uh, he has a sort of combination of, you know, targets plus efficiency. Um, I think Dobbs still needs to be the number two wide receiver here in terms of what you should expect them long term. Watson definitely is the high upside player uh, in terms of his ceiling. You know, I think he has a high ceiling. But I think his floor is lower than you would expect from a highly touted wide receiver. And we just saw his pre-draft profile. You all saw it. He had inconsistent data from North Dakota State. So based on that information, you have to kind of go, all right, he had inconsistent data. He's been kind of hit or miss over the last two years uh, because of injuries and these other sort of things. So just go with the more consistent players. So overall, these are the wide receivers that I definitely would invest in long term in the Packers. I think you definitely need to go with Jaden Reed, at least first, firstly, you know, invest in him first if you're going to invest in this particular wide receiver core. And also consider investing in Romeo Dobbs as a number two option with Christian Watson as a high upside player. Again, if you believe in the upside and you love the athleticism and you think 2022 is representative of what he could be in 2024, absolutely go after Christian Watson. He's going to have the highest upside out of this wide receiver group based on data. However, based on how, what actually happened on the football field, 
and based on what he did at the college level. I think there's a little bit more question marks there with a player like Christian Watson compared to a player like Dobbs compared, you know, compared to a player like Reed. So I think you have to go with Reed first, then go with Dobbs, then go with Watson. I think that's how they should go in terms of the rankings. And based on that information, Dobbs is a highly, highly undervalued prospect from a wide receiver perspective. Because everybody consistently, when you look at wide receiver rankings, you go to them right now, go to any ranking, and you'll find Dobbs the third third wide receiver in that group. And yet he's commanded the most targets out of any of the wide receivers in this particular wide receiver group. So that should tell you something. Even though he is inefficient, he does have that data in terms of his pre-draft profile that kind of helps him out. He does have that rapport with Jordan Love, and all those factors are going to help him you know, stay as sort of the number two option. Again, Reed, Reed has the most upside to be the best wide receiver here, but Dobbs definitely should be that number two spot. So follow this stuff out of the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jim Coburn, and you can check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash jcoburn. Uh, check out my ex, formerly known as Twitter account, at Gemetrics. And if you like this content, you want to see more content like this, leave a comment below. You know, tell me, you know, who you believe should be the top wide receiver in the Green Bay Packers long term. Um, also, check out the other data work that I've done as well on my uh, Twitter and YouTube account. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.